G'day, my name is Joel Rasmussen for Southern Cross Combat, and I'm talking to the man who is still the eternal champion. I'm talking to Mr. Anthony Drillich. Anthony, thank you for the time. How are you today? I'm good, thanks, Joel. It's uh, you revealed just then that you were coming off a, a big announcement. You were present for the for the UFC uh, press conference that just happened. UFC's coming to Perth. You were there. How was it? How was it to be in the room? Yeah, it was exciting. Obviously, uh, I was there doing some training at Scrappy, and uh, next minute, um, all the bloody Seven News and Nine News and <laughs> ABC and all these reporters and oh, what's his name, um. Uh, politicians were there everyone was there so yeah, it was exciting it was good did, did they give you like a heads up that it was happening i got told like just through other people that uh obviously you the ufc and whatnot are coming down um to announce so yeah i was there for that obviously uh volganovsky was there people like that and jack uh jack Della was there steve ersick was there so yeah all the guys were there and uh, yeah, it was good. So I know you've done training. With, well, you train out of both Scrappy and your own gym, and we'll we'll talk about that. And, uh, yeah, and Mandra as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. In a, in a, what, sorry, what was that? You train out of where as well? I, I do also. I train at um down in Mandra under Marcus McKeever. So he helps me um with my jiu jitsu and MMA. Oh, okay. So you're tra- you're a man who trains out of I'll three. Go, I'll go to a couple places. Yeah, but yeah. obviously my main gym is uh obviously Scrappy MMA. So. I know some gyms can break it up by weight class, but I know you have definitely trained with Steven Ersig before. You've yep. you are a teammate of Jack Della Maddalena. Um, have you ever trained or seen like Volk before? Was that your first time seeing him? Yeah, he's came to Scrappy before, like I think for one of his fights, uh, maybe like three fights ago. And yeah, he came down. Um, yeah, I think he came by himself. Did some sessions with us and trained with us. I got a chance to wrestle and move around with them as well. So that was good. Good experience to have, uh, obviously, Alexander Volkanovsky, bloody trying to throw you around. and <laughs> you know, So it's good. Is it well, – now, we'll stop talking about other people in a moment because this interview is about you. Um, what are you drinking? Oh, just a coffee. <laughs> oh, very nice. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about you in a, in a moment. But one more question about, about that. Is it weird to have, like – Obviously, these are people you know and like teammates and stuff. And then there's just this re- weird influx of like strangers and like people who like, b- like let's be honest, maybe don't know as much about the MMA space as people like yourself or people like me. <laughs> it's like all these people are in here and they don't know that I am a killer. Ah, uh, I'm kind of used to it. Obviously, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. I guess it's just I just do my thing, and yeah, I guess people will find out eventually. You know, obviously, I'm trying to work my way to the top. So there'll be a there'll be a point, hopefully, in my life where everyone's like, "Oh yeah, he's uh he's who that person or whatever," you know. But uh, yeah, don't let it phase me, I guess. Now, uh, now, not talking about other people. Now we're talking about you. You are the man who still holds uh, the Eternal Flyweight title. Uh, that was at the most recent Eternal event. You um, retained your title. Now that we're a little bit uh from that fight. Looking on that fight, how did that fight go? What do you think about your performance? Yeah, of um, obviously my opponent came from Japan. He came prepared, ex Pancras champion. So I knew he, he he knows how to win. He knows how to find a win. Obviously, tough opponent. Um, just tried not to play into his game. Really, like I really can only find so much footage of him. So um, we didn't obviously take everything. Like that's exactly how he's going to do things. Obviously, fights change; they're different. You know, depends on the opponent and just the day. So, obviously, um, we prepared for certain things and maybe positions where we might end up, or you know, things like that. Um, but uh, you know, in the first round, I just try to move, get my time, and then do my thing, line them up, and uh, it seemed to work well. Obviously, he was a his style was a lot different to what I was expecting. I was expecting you know to push forwards and you know, be a bit more static on his feet, but um, yeah, he was bouncing around and shit and doing all crazy stuff. Like I remember being backstage, about to walk out, and I can see on the main screen there, he's spinning around and doing backflips and all that. I'm like, man, this guy's springy as hell. He's gonna, yeah, obviously, gonna be all over me, you know. So I was expecting him, yeah, to doing big, explosive, quick movements and be very um agile. And um, 
he was very agile, so I had to play it smart for the first, especially then second round. I think I had my iron and my timing, and then yeah, put him out to get that like big finish. Like, what was that moment like for you to to get that? I know you're not the first time you finished someone in your yeah, career, um, but still, how was it? I really, it really didn't sink in until like a couple minutes after the initial finish. Um, yeah, I, I was just so focused. Like, they're like, "Oh man, did you time this cross or whatever?" I'm like, to be honest, like the only thing I really remember was the ref. I could hear the ref going like on the lines of like, "You need to move or you need to act, otherwise I'm gonna stop the fight." And then I heard that and I was like, "All right, this this guy's about to get done here. Like, he's about the ref's about to stop. I just need to keep hammer fisting and doing my thing." So. That's all I kind of remember of the fight. Um, and yeah, once I got my arm raised, I was like, oh shit, like, yeah, I did put this dude out. I guess I won, you know? So I, at that point, I felt good. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, now, you, you mentioned there you were fighting a, an international opponent. Um, so originally, you were you were scheduled to fight Jake Hurl. That fight didn't happen. The yep. your fight got pushed to the next eternal with a new opponent. How much did that change your preparation? Um, not drastically, I would say like a little bit, of course, cause we're preparing for a different opponent. He has different style, different you know, attributes. So, um, we just kept doing our thing, kept training hard and just, just changed a little couple things, you know, just to help with this new opponent. But, uh, overall, not a massive change. No. Do you know what happened with that Jake Hell fight not coming to be? Not exactly from what I've been told. On the lines of like he he had work commitments he he had to obviously yeah he's got to earn money and feed himself and his family and whatnot so from what I've been told yeah he had some sort of work commitments he couldn't make that date so on to the next I guess and that was the Japanese opponent. So you are the uh, the eternal flyweight champion, uh, but if people look at people look at your professional record, you've had a lot of fights at bantamweight, and if people. Yeah. Also won at featherweight, and then if you look at your amateur record, there's some welterweight fights in there. Yeah. Uh, how did the fly, how did we settle on flyweight? How did the how did capturing the title at flyweight come to be? Um, over time, of course, obviously, I think the heaviest fight I fought at was my first, and that was like 77 kilos. But then, obviously, now I'm fighting at 57 kilos. Well, the weight I've got to get to. So, yeah, I kind of just worked my way down. From 77, and you know, I got into the 60 kilo, you know, then got to band and weight, and I was making weight pretty much not even having to make weight, you know. So, once I got to that, you know, obviously, there was talks about it with my coaches, my brother, and whatnot previous to that, going, Hey, you could probably make fly weight, and I believed I could, you know, it got to the point of like I was saying before that I wasn't really cutting weight anymore, I was just able to get to band them. So, that was the next step. I was like, Well. I'm not really having to push hard to lose my weight to get Benham. I can make fly. And here I am, two belts now. So, yeah, doing my thing. <laughs> Must be nice. Yeah, it is nice <laughs> now. <laughs> How was it to, uh, so, so as you said, like you, you, you begin to bring that weight down, you, 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 it gets lower and lower, but still you're entering a new, a new weight class for the first time fighting for like a professional title. What was that like? Was there any like, oh my God, I hope this all goes well before uh, the first fight? I guess on the back of your mind, you've got all those thoughts and feelings and they obviously happen, but I try to keep myself composed and um, just think of it as another fight, which it is. It's just another fight. The only difference is now you're fighting for a belt and you're going to be doing more rounds. So it's going to be longer. So, you know, I try to go whatever, you know, it's just another dude standing in front of me trying to win. I've got to do the exact same, you know, try my ass off and try to figure out a way to put this guy out within the time I've got. So, yeah, I keep it pretty simple. I try not to put all this, you know, put the world on my shoulders kind of thing and make this all stressful for myself, you know. I just do my thing, go in there knowing, you know, it is a belt, great. I'm going to go in there and try to win. That's as simple as that. And I have. So I just keep that going, keep the ball rolling, you know. After your last win at Bantamweight, did you did you think the next fight would be for a title? Um, no, that um, I'm trying to remember. No, I don't don't think so. Like, I was really just at that point fighting one after another. Um, and 
I can remember rightly, they're like, hey, like, you know, you've had this many fights, you're winning. Did you want to fight for the flyweight title? I think it became vacant because Steve went to the UFC. And I was like, yeah, I can do it. I can make flyweight piece of piss, you know. And obviously for a belt, you, you know, it's hard to say no to that. So, yeah, got it done, got the win. Then, yeah, I, I knew I could keep to this division without struggling. And, yeah, second fight, second win at flyweight. So can't complain now, yeah. I know you said, you know, you try not to put, let the belt put too much emphasis on it. It is obviously a, a fight. Um, but you said it there, like, it's hard to say no to a belt. How is it now? How is this fight being the champion compared to chasing the champion? <laughs> um, damn. Um, I don't know. I don't really, I try not to overthink it and let like these bells get to my head. You know, people are like, yeah, you must, the ego must be up here and stuff. I'm like, man, just the moment I got my belt, literally I went, went backstage and I was like, got dressed and went, all right, well, tomorrow's Sunday. We've got to fly out. Then Monday, I've got to get back to business, you know, whether it's training or running the gym. So I don't know. It's just, for me, it's just like, I already knew, kind of had the feeling, you know, that was my trajectory. That was my path. You know, I work my ass off, train, try to get these guys, you know, put these guys out. It's only a matter of time for me before I win something, you know, whether that be a belt or whatever, you know. And now that I'm continuously going on that path, I can't see why I can't go win you know, the UFC belt at flyweight or whatever way it is, you know? So I'm just going forwards in life and trying to make something on myself, you know? So, you know, I don't make it too complicated or nothing like that. I just, I'm here to win. I'm here to take over and the belts will come. Cool. You said there, uh, whether it be at flyweight or whatever weight is, uh, is flyweight the home for now or do we, yeah. are we looking at other weight divisions? Heavyweight. I want to go heavyweight. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> Stack the way back on. Nah, get to eat whatever nah, you want. That's it. That'd be nice. <laughs> nah, buddy. Yeah, flyweight's my uh, home now, and uh, until otherwise, that's where I'll remain. Uh, I know uh, some people can chase it. Some people can look for it. Some people don't. Do you look at possibly a fight with the bantamweight champion at all? Or not really? No. Like I've been able to get down to these ways, like flyweight, of course. Um quite easily like Ben weights behind me now do I want to go back up there like I don't really need to like the, for one obviously I'm able to get myself to fly away quite easily and Ben weights kind of like I'm more than likely be a smaller guy now because I'm I'll be so light I'll kind of have to work my way up to get to Ben weight so no nah, it's uh it's at the moment behind me obviously right now especially like I'm trying to chase UFC is no reason for me to try to fight at another weight class to get another belt. I'd rather just get to UFC than fight from there, you know? So, yeah, Ben White, you don't bother me. Now, uh, you've had some pretty awesome walkout songs uh, throughout <laughs> your fighting career. Uh, you walked out to the Terminator theme. You walked out to the Pride theme, which was pretty sick. Uh, Can't Be Touched was a bit of a staple there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. How do we how do we pick those songs? What goes into picking the <laughs> Honestly, I I don't even know. We kind of just like I'll be training at the gym and then a song will pop on and it gets, you know, gets me going and I'm like, oh, this might be the song for my next walkout or <laughs> you know, maybe I'm just flicking through the songs while I'm driving and a song might pop up and I'm like, all right, remember that one. It might be a walkout song. So that's really how I go. It's not really something I think about. It's just it kind of happens, you know. So <laughs> You got the playlist saved on Spotify. Yeah. Except for Jones Jr. Yeah. Can't be touched. I literally played that for my first fight until like my fourth fight, fourth or fifth fight or something like that. I just played it nonstop. So I kind of had to change um my songs. Otherwise what? you'll just hear me. What's that? Oh, sorry. Please continue. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah. My, more of my songs will probably just be Roy Jones Jr. by uh, Can't Be Touched by Roy Jones Jr. That's, that's what I'll probably play every single fight if I could, but. I get told off. So everyone kind of goes, Hey, like you're going to change songs or so that's, yeah, that's how I've done it now. I've got to change songs. You've got an expectation or an expectation yeah, to change. Yeah, pretty much. Who's so, enforcing this on you? Everyone, teammates, brother, like coaches. <laughs> so yeah, 
I've got to I've got to keep it. Uh, I can't say uh, playing the one song now. You know, I've got to mix it up. So, yeah, flip through, try to find a good song that's a headbanger, and I might, you know, I might use that to uh, walk out to. Bullies, they're all bullying you. That's it, man. They're bullying me, trying to get these new songs going. Um, I mentioned it. Uh, I mentioned it just then about uh walking out to the Terminator theme. Are you a fan of the Terminator movie? Yeah, yeah. I love Arnie. Grew up on him. Arnold, bloody um, uh, Rambo. Obviously, all those uh, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s action heroes. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch them all. Big fan. Have you uh, have you seen the new Roadhouse film? I have not. Not yet. I've only seen a couple of little snippets. Is it on the list? To watch? Uh, yes. Yeah, like, I've heard both good and bad reviews. <laughs> Obviously, um, who was it? Um, what's his name? Bloody the Irish fellow. Conor McGregor. Uh, McGregor. McGregor, yeah. Like, obviously, his first appearance as an actor, I don't know how much people are expecting. So, from what I've been told, it wasn't his greatest acting, but hey, you know, it's his first movie. So, but yeah, it's on there. I just really want to watch it for McGregor, really. I watched yeah. it for the same reason. Was it good? No. It wasn't good? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. so I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that's. Yeah, so yeah. I, I do want to hear your review on it, though. I look forward to, to uh-huh. hearing uh-huh. your review. Uh, uh, those films that you did mention being a fan of and growing up, is there any other, like, songs from those soundtracks? We've got the Terminator <laughs> walkout. Is there yes. another song that you could walk out to from any of those films? Yeah, it'll be another Arnold one. It'll probably be Conan the Barbarian, the first one, where they've got the drums going and, you know, they're trying to weld that sword to get, uh, get the, the sword going and all that at the beginning. Um. That would be definitely one of them. That That'd got me going. Sick. Even even watching as a child and watching it now, I'm like, yeah, kind of relive that past. You know, that song gets you going. That'd be sick. Now, uh, we, we established earlier, you, you're a guy who trains out of three gyms, two of which just training at, one of which you're co-owning and coaching at? Yep. So, yeah. Uh, so, obviously, my main gyms are Scrappy MMA. I train there pretty much every day. And at night, when I'm coaching slash training, I'll obviously Jewish DCA, Jewish Combat Academy. I train there at the end of the week. I generally do a couple classes with Marcus down in Mandra. He's an excellent jiu-jitsu coach, excellent MMA coach as well. And he uh, gives different stuff. Like he's able to teach different things that another coach maybe doesn't teach. So I do enjoy getting it mixed up, you know, and um, being taught new things by different people and having their opinion. And um, it, it seems to work right now and it definitely helps. What is that like balancing all that like? Is that if you're, let's say you're in a week of fight camp, how often yep. are you going to each place? So every morning I'm down at Scrappy. Every morning you'll see me there. Um, I'm training there sometimes in the afternoons. Um, Then in majority of the afternoons, I am coaching and training at DCA. And then at the end of the week, the last couple of days, so like, uh, maybe like Thursday night, Friday, nah, I'll be down in Mandra, depending on the week, of course. Then I kind of drive back up and do my strength and conditioning and any other training I do on the Saturday. Then, yeah, Sunday I rest. So I'm driving everywhere. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say that. Must be rough on the petrol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a small car, so at the moment, you know, it's not, uh, I'm not paying a huge amount, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's something, yeah, I'm always driving. Uh, so I think just in general, the MMA scene is kind of a tight knit, uh, community. And then as someone as yourself, when you're kind of training and getting so many bodies at, at different places, uh, what do you think of like kind of development of MMA and in general combat sports out of Perth right now? Man, we're killing it at the moment. Like we've got so many good guys just like putting these guys out and winning and obviously getting to the UFC, you know? Like, I just came back from the conference for the announcement for UFC in Perth. And, like, yeah, we're having, like, people who are from the government, people who are, like, you know, massive business owners or, you know, CEOs of these giant corporations and Perth Arena people and all sorts and people coming in just to promote one fight, one fight in Perth and Seven News and Nine News and all the other you know, channels are there filming. So, yeah, obviously we must be doing something right if we got this much media and exposure coming through just Perth itself, let alone Australia. So yeah, you, we must be doing something right. <laughs> You're a, if I'm not mistaken, you made your 
Uh, maybe not pro debut. It might have been one of your amateur fights uh, in the ring. Yeah. So my first ever fight was in the ring. I can remember that. Yeah, that was at 77. And I don't think at that time there was any like B class or, you know, you wear the hybrid gloves, the seven ounce gloves and the shin pads. And there was nothing like that. So I was literally like 16, 17. And like, there's the ring. You fight this grown ass dude at 77 kilos, four ounce gloves, ball guard, mouth guard, sweet. Let's fight. And went for it. So, yeah, different time. So there was that. And then you had a fight in a bar and you couldn't go in by yourself. You had to be like escorted into the building. Yeah. So they flew me to Darwin. And um, this is probably one of my most fond memories because there's multiple things why I uh, enjoy memory. And one of it is that, yeah, I wasn't allowed in. I wasn't like, because the venue was like a club kind of place. And um, yeah, so they had to call my parents and get this paperwork signed and all sorts of like BS just to get me in there. Then eventually they did. So my coach became a guardian for the night. I fought a guy who had to wear a rashi because he had a swastika tattoo on his chest. So I'm assuming some sort of neo-Nazi kind of guy. I don't really know. But he had a big swastika on his chest from what I was told. Knocked him out like 12 seconds. Then my coach went to the bar and because he's my guardian, I have to stay with him. So yeah, playing the gray area, you know, <laughs> so, 16, 17, bloody in a bar first time. So it was, yeah, different experience. And obviously yeah, it was crazy. I, uh, I know that was, uh, you said that was in Darwin. Darwin. Yeah. So that's in Darwin. So I know it's not exactly Perth cause they're different places. Uh, yeah. but <laughs> still like to go from fighting in a uh in the ring for your first fight as at 16 years old because the cage is banned to now yeah. you are professional champion of a big promotion that has shows in perth and is on the fight pass like what is that like that kind of development of like not just you but the sport around you damn it's not something um i've really thought about too deeply you know like i'm at the point in my life where some where things are just happening so quickly, it's hard to just like think back and really trace and see the outside, you know, it, everything just seems to be like one thing after another. And, you know, like I'm 30 now. It's just like, holy shit. Like I still feel like I'm 21 to be honest. And, you know, I don't know. It is weird. Even there's like things like sport, just like you kind of blink your eyes and there's just so much changed. Like obviously but like you can talk about MMA, just like, MMA itself, I started off in a cage. The cage was pretty much illegal to like to fight in. Then all of a sudden it's not. Then they get a commission in. Then all of a sudden now it's UFCs here. Then all of a sudden now there's possible UFC champions coming out of Perth. It's just like so much has happened so quickly. It's just like, yeah, it's almost like the UFC and other MMA promotions can't keep up with us. You know, we're just punching our way through and just keep going. All of a sudden, your teammates are fighting in the UFC. Or all of a sudden, you're on the doorstep. It it happens quick. It's like you, just, yeah, it's like you just wake up in one morning and then seven things already happen, and it's, you know, you're just like, what the hell's Jesus? It's just like, yeah, blinking. Good things can happen if you just get after it. So that's the sport and the life we're in, I guess. You know, these things do happen. Talking about uh, getting after it, uh, what do you feel your next step is in the sport? Um, well, hopefully you'll see, you know, you know, um, obviously being there today for the conference and all that, meeting a couple of people, it's like, it's like, damn, if you can get me into that event, it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to put someone out or at least try to, at least, you know, and put a good show on. So yeah, if any of you promoters or whatever watching this, fucking get me on, I'm going to knock mm-hmm. someone out. <laughs> Has there yeah, been whatever. any contact with the UFC at all? Um... I think my coaches and whatnot have like pushed through, you know, obviously put it out there. So I just got to wait and see really. Um, yeah. Like I was saying before, like I can blink and then all of a sudden I'm standing in a cage with someone for the UFC. So right now I don't, don't know really. Like I've just got to wait and see. So yeah, they've been pushing me to get, to get in the UFC. So I've, yeah, I've just got to wait, I guess, wait and see. And we'll find out soon, sooner or later. Hopefully yes. sooner. Hopefully soon, absolutely. Yeah, if soon. if there isn't uh, a, a, any response and and this next fight isn't uh, for the UFC, uh, in the local scene, is there anyone that you're looking at a fight with? 
No, not really. Like, it, for me, I just fight the guy, the next guy in line. Like, especially now that you're saying, like, you know, I, you know, I've got the belt, so why do I need to look for who the next opponent should be? You know, they're going to come to me anyway. I, I've got the belt and everyone wants it. So whoever's next, you know, they'll, I'm sure they'll get them there and we'll fight and we'll find out who wins. And I believe it's going to be me by knockout or submission. So a bit of confidence. Yeah. You need it. Put them out. And hopefully if, if that, if it comes to that where I've got to fight again for whether it's eternal or whatever promotion, uh, hopefully they'll be it and you'll see. So, but wait and see, I guess. I'll just keep winning, keep putting these dudes out, making exciting fights, and I believe I'll be there soon. Since uh, the fight kind of fell through, do you see maybe Jake Hurl being that kind of next man in line? Possibly. Um, I have, I don't know what he's doing like life-wise, whether he's still training, fighting, competing. I don't know. So it, it, that could be in the cards. I just, I'll have to wait and see and see what my co- coaches and matchmakers and promoters and whatnot come back with. But for now, I'm just, I'm open book. Really, it's whoever's next. Yeah. I'm just going to ask you about some, some other guys at, at Flyweight, just kind of get your thoughts. Not necessarily, <laughs> will I fight this person? Yes, here is the date. Um, But two people who are uh, the top of Flyweight in Australia right now is yourself and uh, Stuart Nickel. And yep. he's, he's also coming off a, a, a big win recently. I was just wondering what your thoughts on Stuart Nickel are. Yeah, sure. Nick was good. Um, I think he's in a very similar boat to I am. He's like on the cusp of making it to the UFC or whatever promotion he wants to get himself in. Obviously, I don't know him too personally, but uh, I'm sure that's his plan as well. And um, yeah, hats off to him. He can he can make it. You know, he um, I don't know. He could be. He's like very similar to where I am right now. He's literally like he might have to fight one more time and get to the UFC. Maybe he can get the UFC now. Maybe it's contender series. I don't, like we're very close. So yeah, whatever he wants to do, I'm sure he can do it. Is that a fight you would like to see? With uh me and him? Yes. Yeah, but I would like to see in the UFC. But even then, like yeah, if we get both get into the UFC, it's like I'd rather fight a guy not from Australia. If it happens, it happens, of course. But it's like why try to put another guy down from you know, Australia and you know of course, like if I was the only Aussie, great. But if I can just beat a bunch of Americans and other people from around the world and become champion that way, it's like shit. It's like those other Aussies behind me can can work their way up with me, you know. But hey, whatever, you know, it it doesn't bother me. I don't know the guy too well or anything. You know, he's he's good. So it it might happen if it's gonna happen. I'd like to see it in the UFC. So we, it's like, hey, we both made it. Let's fight it. You know, let's see what happens. Uh. And now a man who's doing something, who has done something similar uh, to you, who's had a, a longer career at bantamweight and he's now moved to flyweight is Sean Gauchi. Uh, he's about to oh, make yeah. his, his flyweight debut. Um, I was wondering just in general, if you had, have, have you seen any of Sean's fights? Do you have any thoughts on Sean? Um, I haven't watched him. I haven't watched him in a while, but um, yeah, like he's good as well. He's, he's beat some really good dudes. Um, He's similar. To where we are, I think he's maybe a couple fights behind us, but same thing, he can shoot himself up real quick. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, Sean's a good fighter, there's not much to say about him. Um, from what I've been told, obviously, I don't follow much fighters or anything, I kind of just do my own thing, but uh, he was at Bantam, wasn't he? And he yes. wants to go to fly, so, yes, he, so he was Bantamweight champion, vacated that belt, and is now moved to fly, and he's going to fight okay. for the flyweight belt in Hex. Right, okay, cool. So, yeah. Well, yeah, good luck to him. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm sure he's, he's the same. He can do it. So, we'll have to find, wait and see and see what he, um, how he goes and go from there, really. But um, really hasn't become a discussion for myself to fight him. Um, I'm sure, like, lay down the track, it will. But it, it depends where we will go. We're all, like, us three guys you've, you've named. It's like we're right up there, you know. It's like our past can go all sorts of ways right now. So I think a lot of us, especially like uh, Nickel, I think they're trying to like guide him in certain directions and make him, you know, be where he wants to be. And I'm, I'm sure that's uh, UFC as well. So, yeah. So when you're looking at like from that lens of like one more fight could get me into the UFC, 
if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm, I've got another monitor here and I'm looking up just to make sure I'm not mistaken. But if I'm not All mistaken, right. Stuart Nickel doesn't at the moment hold a belt and um, Sean Gauchy is looking to capture a belt. When you look at an opponent, does like that factor in? Like you talked about your last opponent being a Pancrase champion. D does your opponent's uh, accomplishments factor in when you're looking for fights? Well, um, I guess at this point it does because it's like, hey, I've got a belt now. And it's like, if you're giving it me like Joe Blow, who's never really, you know, he's fought nobody or whatever, it's like, is that a good matchup? So now that, you know, now that I'm up here, it's like, there has to be some like, uh, to wear like credibility, you know, you know ex Pancrase champion, ex champion of this or whatever, Olympic wrestler. There has to be, I think there has to be a little something there, you know, always put this guy up, put that guy out. You know, I think there needs to be that now, especially for myself. So obviously, like you said before, one's after a belt and one has a belt. So it's like, it's like those dudes, they're already like, you can go whatever way, you know, whether they're trying to push for UFC or get the belt and go to UFC or whatever they want to do. Yeah, they're already up there and they already got their pass pretty much set out, it sounds like. Anthony, I know it's been a bit of a crazy day for you having the media show up to your gym. Uh, so I appreciate uh, your time. Uh, thank you for talking to me today. What is on for the rest of the day? I'm going to coach and do some training and some lunch, which would be nice. So <laughs> Classic. The yeah. life yeah. of a fighter. Would uh, I, I know. Sorry. Last question. Uh, yeah. if, if not that UFC card, surely you're looking at that eternal card the night before. Like you got it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's like either one, obviously UFC is nice, but Hey, if I can't get to UFC, it's like that, that, uh, eternal card's going to be the next one. So yeah. Whatever prep, they give me, I'm going to do it. Prep for August 18th. If it has to be August 17th, then it's fine too. It's only one day earlier. That's it. That's it. So I'll take any of them. Anthony, I thank you so much for your time. Uh, I greatly appreciate you talking into the day and I'm sure I will talk to you before your next fight. No problem, Joel. Thank you Thanks so much. Me. Thank you.